You see, He gave His only begotten Son. God's love would not even come through to us without Christ. A man gets married, he works. He provides, and he cares. The hardest thing for people to do, you see, I just won't do a wedding where the man and woman comes together and says, I want, I want uh, uh, his pillow, pillow, that's what he said now, I want his pillowcases and her pillowcases. I want his bank account and her bank account. Well, come on now, I'm bringing it together here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I, I want her car and his car. I want her side of the garage and his side of the garage. And I, I want this part of the house to belong to her. And I want that part of the house to belong to him. How many here know that when God brings us together in love, what God's is God. No, no, what God's is mine. And what mine is God. Because he brings us together. That's what love is. God so loved the world that he gave. Yes, hallelujah. What did he do? He gives his best. Oh, somebody help me. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. Did you know a lot of churches can't have services tonight because of the Super Bowl? Well, I'll be here. I'm Watch out. I'm going to get on somebody's phone in a minute. Michael, call, I talked to Michael last night. He called me back. I called him. He yeah. called me back. He, sometimes when you call, yep. he don't answer your phone. He'll just call you right back. And I, and I called him. He called me right back. And, and we got to talking. And he said, I'm protesting the Super Bowl. That's right. And I have good reasons to do. <laughs> and I thought, Michael, of all people, is going to protest my Super Bowl. And I said, Mike, Mike, are you really? He said, yes, I am. I said, Mike, I didn't know you were that involved. He said, I'm not. But I want everybody to know I'm protesting. <laughs> <laughs> One man broke his, but tell him why. I will, I will. <laughs> I got good ground. <laughs> he said, I'm going to be in church. Nice. I said, Mike, as your pastor, I sort of expected you to be in church even on the Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Amen. He said, yeah. And I said, because I expect that out of Michael. I expect that out of him. I just would not believe he in this church for that. Amen. He said, yeah, but he said, I wouldn't, but I, he said, I'm still going to protest. I said, why? He said, because they're selling Toyotas. That's right. They're sponsoring it. They can take it. And I don't want nothing to do with it now. I've had enough. I've had enough. You see, you see, even, even if they wasn't, even if they wasn't, I believe the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'm going to give up everything I've got. I'm going to give everything to him that I might be able to gain everything he's got. I'll get off of these streets of gold so that I can get up and walk on streets of gold so that I can walk down Main Street with nothing in my pocket, with nothing on my back, with nothing on us. I know because God loves me. Amen. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yes, he does. The thing the devil would like to get across to every person in the world is that God just don't love me no more. But God loves me. He loves me before I could love myself. He loves me when nobody else could love me. He loves me. Well, you see, a woman gets married. And when she gets married, she gives herself for her family. Look over to somebody and say, it ain't no love like the mother's love except God's love. Mm -hmm. I only got 15 in minutes. I don't even like that. <laughs> you see, a woman will give herself every time for her family's welfare. She will do everything she can to keep her family together. She will go without so that they might have. She'll push things back that she needs, that she desperately needs, that her sons or her daughters uh, might look like uh, um, that they're getting blessed of her mama, uh, and they really are. And she'll give of herself. Uh, she'll give of her words. Uh, she'll give of her time. Uh, she'll give of her moments. Uh, listen to me, church. Uh, um, the devil's trying to take that love away from us. Uh, we've got a society that we're living in today. They don't even know what love is uh, because they haven't experienced the cross of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. Mm -hmm. I preach like this morning yeah. than that. You see, the world don't know what you know. They don't understand. 
All they are is devouring one another. All they are is going through the world and they're eating everything that we plant. They're grasshoppers. When you plant something good seed in your, in your children's life, the world is going to come along and rob that. And they're going to come along and try to take out the goodness of you. They're going to try to take away your love. Oh, but listen to me. They can't take away the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Oh, listen to me. Turn over to the book of Romans, the 8th chapter. This is James chapter. I'm not going to let you Go to the 22nd verse of the 8th chapter, James, and read that verse for me. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth and pain together as a Everybody say the whole creation. Well, what is the creation of God? Look over somebody and say there was nothing made that was made except it be by the Word of God. And then it's the Son of God, can you say amen? amen? And God's creation is much more than you and I. It's much more than that. It's much more than, 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 than anything. Although God has created all the physical matters of, of the world. Did you know that? He created the sun, the moon, the stars. Did you know that? He created the moon. He created everything around us. The breath that we take is the creation of God. Oh, somebody help me. And all the creation. Did you know that there's a special language in the creation of God that we don't understand? Right. Well, which mom was here this morning? She'd help me out in this message. Watched the cowboy movie about a week ago. And he cut one of the big redwood trees down. Man, that hurt me. I haven't seen the redwoods yet. I want to go so bad. But, but they cut the tree down and they, they sliced it right down to there and they put a big piece of it sitting up there. Us, us hibbers down south, we call it big old piece. And there was a big old piece of this tree just hanging there like that. And they had, they had little marks around the inside as the tree grew. Each mark inside there brought forth something else. And, and they began to timeline the tree, how long it had been planted, how long it had been there. And they began to put little flags. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but they say that this is really there. And, and, and they put little flags about everything that's happened in time all the way down. And I thought, Lord, in amazement. That tree's been standing through a lot of stuff. Amen. Oh, somebody help me. The tree has been standing through a lot of time. The tree has been there when nobody else was there. The tree was standing there. It maybe started off like this. Oh, but who but God? Who but God can make a tree? You see, man can't make trees. All we can make is similarities. Yeah. Nobody. Oh, we like these kind of trees. We don't got to have to do nothing with it. It's just self-contained. The only thing we get upset with is when it gets dust on, we got to dust. You see? <laughs> no, 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 no. You see, you see, God creates things. And He creates it to be there for time. And it stands the test of time. What is it? In the beginning was God. And what is God? It's God's love. A God's love. For God so loved the world that He gave. He gave His what? His only begotten Son. And here it comes. Everybody say, Whosoever. Whosoever. What a word. You see, Whosoever is a is a word that's a general population of words. Whosoever. Whosoever. But did you know that word come, becomes personal when I, the whomsoever, accepts, accepts Jesus Christ in my life because now that word, whosoever, has brought forth a meaning to me. I'm no longer just a whosoever. I'm a somebody. Oh, somebody help me preach this morning. Oh, think about this just for a second. You see, last night while I was in my closet of prayer, and I was going through the, through the atmosphere of God's creation, and I was exploring God, and I was way out into the fathomless parts of God, my mind was just soaring through the heavens. I get a telephone call from my man. And I reached over and I picked up the phone. 
And the man talks very fast. He's part of our family. And, and sometimes we get talking so fast in our family that I don't understand them sometimes. And I was trying to slow him down so I could get the understanding of it. And as he was talking to me, he said, Receiver, can God save somebody? And I said, why, yes, God can save somebody. He said, then why is it, why is it the churches makes it so hard to get saved? I said, what was your question? He said, the question is, can God save somebody? I said, then how did we get over on churches? Got quiet. Look over at your neighbor and say, church can't save you. No, 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 no. You, you, see, you see, you don't understand. You see, we want to get mad at God because people make it too hard for us to get saved. Come on now. Listen to me. It's not hard to get saved. No, no nothing. For God so loved the world that, that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever. Oh, somebody help me with this word. You see, you see, I found out that whosoever didn't mean just the rich people. No. Come on now. Uh, whosoever didn't mean just the poor people. Come on now. Did you know the poor people gets mad when the rich guy gets saved? That ain't right. Rich people get mad when the poor people get saved. That ain't right. They don't know who so whosoever is. Oh, glory be to God. You know, sometimes somebody gets mad because, you know, if, if they was down there in the Hatfields and McCoy's and the Hatfields got saved and McCoy's got mad at God because they thought he loved him, the Hatfields more he loved McCoy's. Oh, you know, you, 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 you haven't got this yet. You see, that whosoever belongs to the people who God loves. And I ain't seen nobody God don't love. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever oh Lord I love it I, I, I'd love to spend some time here but I want you to go home with this can God say then why do we make it so hard on people to say come on now think about this for a moment why do we make it so hard on people to say what does it take to be saved it tells you here it, it, it tells you. You see, the wonderful word that is general begins to get particular. He embraces all and touches each one of us. You see, the whosoever I was, the whosoever of the world. But then God came down and embraced me. Oh, somebody help me. Did you know what he embraced? You know when you know when God embraced me. He embraced me right after I went through the school of theology. Mm -hmm. He embraced me right after I got my name put down on the church register. <laughs> he embraced me when I went out there and got 15 people to, to get saved. And then he says, you're welcome. <laughs> he loved me while I was yet in my sin. And while I was yet walking on the wayside. And I didn't even know I loved myself. I didn't even know what love was. But he came down. He got into my heart. And my arms began to do like Jesus did. They opened up. And I begin to love the world. Why? Because his love was in me. Amen. Oh, that's good for you. <laughs> Suppose God had offered salvation to only the rich. He wouldn't be here this morning, would you? Suppose God had offered salvation only to the healthy. <laughs> Oh, come on, church. He, he, he saves the healthiest because he does not healthy. What if he, he only gives salvation to the educated? No, no, no. See, he was talking to a good religious man, and he said, For God is the love of the world. But he didn't say, Look over at somebody and say, You make a demon's have some money. But that wasn't what he was after. He's not after your money. He's not after your finances. He's not after hard working people. He's not after lazy people. He's after the whosoever's. Oh, so good. The whosoever's. You see, but God calls all people individually to trust in him. 
I became an individual of the Hoosh Brothers. <laughs> I became the individual. I became the one that I can identify myself with Christ upon the cross, that if he died, I can go ahead and say he died in my place. And I look up there and I no longer see Christ, but I see me. And Christ looks down and he no longer sees me, but he sees Christ. And now I know there's been a change in me. I know that something's happened to me. He loved me while I was yet in my sins. And he brought me out of the miry clay. And he planted my feet upon the solid rock to stay. And on this rock, I'll build my head. And guess what? I'm part of that family. What if God's offer was not based on faith at all? Look at that next word. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever what's that next word? What would happen if that wasn't there? Picture men working and trying and dying. Working and trying and dying. Doing all the works going out and giving the goods to the poor, going out and doing everything they can, walking and working, walking and working, and walking and working, but never believing. You see that one word right there uh, brings the whosoever's uh, down to a personal basis with God. It's the whosoever's that I was, but now I believe. Oh, somebody help me. I'm believing this morning. I'm believing in the word of God. I have become a child of God. Yes. That your men learning, earning, and failing. Ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. My Lord, am I preaching like this? Yeah. Yeah. There's people today that have never fell on that word believing and walked away with the understanding. Because if you did, you will never be the same again. Yeah. Never be the same again. Since you've walked where Jesus walked, you'll never be the same again. Imagine people earning all of their lifetime. Did you know there's millionaires today that doesn't know this, this verse, believing? They don't even know the word believing in. Come on. There's, there's Donald Trump right now trying to sell, sell grave sites to people on his, on his uh, golf course. And, and, and he's trying to sell it. And did you know that there's people spending a lot of thousands of money? Did you know that there's people out there today that doesn't want to die so they go out and get frozen? Yeah. I tried to think about that for a while. I thought, Lord, what's the difference in frozen and dead? You talk to the person that's dead, and you don't talk back. You talk to the person that's frozen, and they just stand there, and they look at you. They don't move. What's the difference? You see, I know one thing I've done. Since I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, I have been transfigured. Mm -hmm. I have passed from death onto life. Mm -hmm. And guess what I found in Jesus? I found life. And I found it more abundantly. I'm a living on the good side now. I'm walking and talking with Jesus. I get up in the morning and I'm refreshed. I know that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Even though I see things around me, I'm just going to die and go the other way. I know one thing. I believe I'm that God so loved the world. I'm that he gave his only begotten son. And I'm a believer. I'm the whosoever that has come a personal child of God. I'm a One verse in closing. Don't even have to read it. Just consider the thief on the cross that was dying. When thou enterest into thy kingdom, remember me. Did he have time to work? No. Did he have time to run down to the bank account? Close it out and give it to the church. No. Did he take everything he had and give it to somebody? What did he do? He hung on the cross 
And he believed that Jesus Christ was a son of the living God. He didn't get a chance to get baptized in water. He didn't get a chance to, to, to go down there and make himself a big name. In fact, I don't even think he built five churches. Oh, somebody help me. But this thing I do believe, that when Jesus said, This day, thou shalt be with me. Oh, that's all that matters. This day, thou shalt be with me. Are you ready to go with the Lord this morning? You see, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Is John 3.16 true today, people? Amen. Yes, it is. Every day. You can be saved by faith in Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. What a message to take to the world today. If that message stays here within these four walls today, you've done wrong. But if you'll take that message to your family and tell everybody you know, for God so loved the world. Have you experienced the love of God in the worldly things around you today? Or this that happened? Or this that happened? Did you hear what Lyle said this morning? Bonnie and Bayless is down here in the church today. Florida. They got them oranges, grapefruits, and all that. Bonnie said, yesterday she talked to me and she said, Me and Bayless are getting out and running around town. I said, You're going to run around here? Uh -huh. She laughed. <laughs> she said, I'm enjoying it down here. Yeah. Yeah. She said, Every day it's in its 70s. 74 today, she said. I said, Well, Bonnie, when I got up this morning, it was 76 here. <laughs> was it she said it was, and I said, yeah. She said, Pastor, are you telling me the truth? I said, yeah, I had turned the front of down. <laughs> I, said, we had seven I said, Bonnie, I said, yours is because God loves you today. He said that good, warm sunshine. She said, you know what, Pastor? I said, what? She said, last week it rained one day. And I said, really? She said, yeah. She said, but everybody I stopped to talk to, they said they needed that rain. I said, have you ever seen it rain that somebody said, I didn't need it? Mm. 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 Listen to the church. God sends us what we need. Mm. Right. When God created this earth, He put all the oil in it that we need. That's right. Never will know. He put all the coal in it that yep. we need. Yep. Never he put know. all the minerals there that we need. Yep. God knows exactly the time mm -hmm. of His coming. Mm -hmm. He knows exactly what we need of. <coughs> He'll let no more come upon us than what we're able to bear, and along with it, He will make a way of escape. Mm -hmm. Can you say amen? amen? I'm so glad that we got a church this morning where people can pray and get saved. Amen. I'm so glad this morning that we don't have a, a list that they have to go through. Because we know the whosoever is. All they have to do is believe. I'm glad this morning that we don't have a church that we have to run up to the door and look them over before we let them in. I believe we let them in, get them saved, and then they walk out looking just like the pastor. They be again. <laughs> I see that too. But you see, if we walk in the path of Christ, other people will follow us. Mm -hmm. Michael said, Pastor, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I've got to get that in. Eat this, eat this, eat that. I said, Michael, don't preach it. Live it by example. You got to think, you know, some of that food he's trying to feed her, I don't think he likes me. He does. First, practice what you preach. Is that what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. If you'll live it, if you'll walk it, if you'll talk it, if you live it, and you show them that God can do it, you'll live the, the diet of, of, of Daniel. Can you say amen? Right. Daniel right. didn't preach everybody. Nope. You know, he just went ahead and said, let them eat what they want to eat. He said, I'm just going to eat what I'm supposed to eat. And God will bless me. Amen. Am I preaching right this yeah, morning? Yes, you are. Let's get it together, church. It's a nice thing. <laughs>